Welcome back. Well, Grafta India posted a good set of quarter two numbers. Revenue is up 25%. Margins have also recovered on a quarter on quarter basis to 8.6%. To discuss this, we are now joined by Mr. Yogesh Malhotra, who is the whole time director and CEO of the company. Mr. Malhotra, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, well, it's a good set of numbers reported by the company in quarter two. I wanted a sense on the volume growth because this time it is around 17%. Uh, what is the outlook for FY23? Uh, is uh, upwards of 20% doable by the company? Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have grown around 17% uh, year on year and around 24% quarter, quarter on quarter. And uh, yeah, around 25% growth rate is very much possible. Uh, I mean, uh, we had some setbacks this, uh, in this quarter because of our Sri Lanka plant not uh, working at full capacity because of obvious reasons. Uh, and also because some of our expansion, uh, uh, I mean, some of our capacity expansion could not come, uh, become, I mean, uh, could not be taken in time uh, for, because of heavy rains in Chittur, we could not expand the capacities there and also in Togo. Uh, so most of the expansions that were supposed to come in Q2 uh, would be coming in Q3 now. And uh, so definitely we would be on target of more than 25% growth year on year. All right. Okay, Mr. Malhotra, hi. Thanks uh, very much for joining in. Uh, you've managed to maintain this 8 to 9% uh, EBITDA margin, um, you know, for the company. And you all have recovered to around 8.6%. What would you be guiding the street in terms of margins? Uh, so, uh, I must tell you that we have not recovered. Even in the last quarter, the margins were, uh, in fact, higher than the current 8 to 9% because we are hedging. So, it does not show in the operational margin uh, uh, because of uh, these uh, regulations uh, but otherwise the margins have always been more than 9 to 10 percent even in this quarter the overall margins uh, EBITDA margins were 9.4 uh, percent and uh, this is uh, very sustainable we can uh, go uh, and achieve these margins year on year there is no problem in that Mm. All right, uh, consistent margins at, at any between eight to nine percent. Just wanted to understand a couple of things. Uh, your Senegal plant uh, has that uh, you know begun reflecting in your numbers. Uh, how much does your uh, you know quarterly run rate in your aluminium business increase uh, by virtue of the Senegal plant? So it has not shown in the Q2 figures. It will definitely show uh, in Q3 because uh, it has only just been commissioned uh, and uh, it will start giving results from no November onwards. So the capacity is around 4,000 tons uh, per annum. So that will start reflecting uh, in November, November onwards. And that would be, uh, in a, on a full year basis, how much? Will, will that be 50, 60, 70 4, crores? 4,000 4, metric ton per annum. Uh, in, in terms of revenue, how much will that be? In terms of revenue, it uh, would be around uh, uh, 60 crore rupees. 60 crore rupees from the new 60, plant. Yeah, 60 to 70 crore rupees per annum. Okay. So can you tell us what uh, does debt look like in your books? There has been a reduction to the tune of 90 crore rupees. What is the absolute debt right now? And by the end of this year, what is the number looking like? So the debt, I mean, even though we've increased the revenues, the, the debt or the volumes, the debt has come down uh, from around 370 crores to around 295, 300 crores. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the net debt to equity ratio is now less than one. It's around 0.6. And we... we uh, are targeting to keep it under uh, under one. Uh, I mean, going forward also. Okay. So part of this is because of the increased India business, which is based uh, basically. Uh, uh, I mean, in which working capital cycle requirement is very less. Okay, you have in the past mentioned that you are looking to raise funds, uh, maybe even via the Q via the QIP route. Uh, can you guide us in terms of those plans and where do they stand? So there are two parts of our expansion plans. One is the expansion in existing verticals, uh, that is aluminium, lead and plastic. Uh, and in these verticals, uh, whatever expansion we're going to do is going to come from internal accrual. But we are also targeting other verticals like lithium ion uh, battery recycling, also paper recycling in, in Central America, and steel recycling also in, in Africa. So we would require funds, uh, I mean, either through additional debt or uh, through QIP, once we go into these new verticals, for the existing verticals, the, whatever debt is required will be coming from internal accrual only. Revenue, you said this year would be how much? 2200 crores is what you did last year. 25% is the volume growth that you are looking at. How much would that mean mm -hmm. in terms of revenue and how much of that will be non-led? 
so 3000 crore uh, from so in in terms of numbers we cannot guide you because it depends on the metal prices also but 25% growth in volume terms would definitely be there so around about it would be around 2700 to 3000 crore number would be there and non lead would be how much of that so non lead would be around 20% Oh, okay. All right, Mr. Malhotra, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking to us. So that's Gravita. I uh, just want to point out that Adani Wilmar is now showing a cut of around 2.5%. Remember that they already came out with an update apprising investors that it's going to be a tough quarter that was on the 12th of October. But nonetheless, the street doesn't like what it sees in terms of numbers, though the headwinds were largely in place and they had guided for a low single-digit growth back way back in the start of the month. Uh, well, we need to take a break, but on the other side, our commodity segment, Manisha Gupta, commodities editor, will be joining in.